This is Holly Taylor, Assistant State Naturalist for Tennessee State Parks, and we are continuing our video series on spring ephemerals in Tennessee here at beautiful Edgar Evans State Park. And today we're going to talk about a really interesting and unique wildflower that a lot of people would probably overlook unless you know what to look for. So let's get out on the trail and go look at some. This is Jack in the Pulpit, or Arisema trifilum. And this wildflower is a member of the Arum family, or Araceae. These plants are also referred to as aeroids. And there's one really familiar plant that a lot of you probably had in your home at some point that's in this family, and that's the peace lily. And peace lilies are members of this family, and you can find them in stores a lot around Easter. All members of the Arum family have a similar flower structure that's composed of two parts. So, Inside, you have this club-shaped structure known as the spadix. And this fleshy spike actually has flowers way down at the base of it that you can't really see unless you dissect the flower. So that's the spadix, or jack, hence the jack in the pulpit. And this leafy covering is known as the spathe. And it's usually striped in maroon or almost black, but occasionally it can also just be white and green. So most plants are either classified as monoecious or dioecious, and this refers to the method in which they're pollinated. So in a dioecious plant, you have either or. So you have a plant that's going to be either male or female. And a monoecious flower is two and one, so they can self-pollinate. And when it comes to Jack in the Pulpit, it's a bit more complicated than that. Jack in the pulpit is typically monoecious, mean, meaning that it has both male and female parts and can self-pollinate. But it is occasionally pollinated by gnats and thrips as well. But it can actually change its gender, and it usually does this in response to its age and growing conditions. And this changing sexual pattern is referred to as paradiaceous. Now, it may not stand out very much when it's blooming, just because of its muted color scheme that kind of blends in with the landscape but you'll definitely notice it later in the summer or early fall when it has that bright shiny red fruit. It looks very tasty to us, but we'd better not eat it. But it does provide food for birds, especially wild turkeys, which will eat the seeds and also disperse them. So in addition to the name Jack in the Pulpit, it has a long list of other common names like pepper turnip, bog onion, brown dragon, Indian cherries, Indian cradle, marsh turnip, and plant of peace. And you can tell by several of those names that it has been eaten in the past, and Native Americans did indeed cook and eat this plant. But it's important to point out that Jack in the Pulpit, like other members of the Aram family, contains needle-like crystals of calcium oxalate, which cause an intense burning sensation when it's eaten. And although cooking or drying does lessen the effects, it doesn't get rid of it completely. So it's important that you don't try to eat this plant yourself. When it comes to the Latin name, Arisema trifilum, the genus Arisema comes from the Greek word eris, which means arum, and ama meaning red, in reference to the fruit. And then trifilum just means three leaf. I wanted to spend some time talking about resources that you can have on hand for identifying and learning more about wildflowers. And the first book that I would recommend, first and foremost, is this one. Wildflowers of Tennessee, the Ohio Valley, and the Southern Appalachians by Horn and Cathcart. This is an excellent resource that I recommend highly if you're wanting to identify wildflowers. So, this one. And this is also a good one to have on hand, Wildflowers of Tennessee by Jack B. Carmen. So, both of these together are good field guides to have. And a lot of you have been asking in the comments section about cultivating these native plants in your home gardens. And of course we always recommend that you purchase them from native plant nurseries and not dig them up in the wild. And a good book to learn more about cultivating these species is this one right here. I really love this one. It's all about Tennessee wildflowers by Jan W. Midgley. And it's got some excellent information about native plants and how to grow them in your own gardens and culture tips, as well as good information about regional, the different regions of Tennessee and the different species in Tennessee as well. So I really recommend this book. 
I hope you've enjoyed today's video about Jack in the Pulpit here at Edgar Evans State Park. And as always, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And we'll look forward to seeing you in our next Wildflower video. Thanks for watching.